Welcome back to Dragon of Ice Spire Peak Adventure Walkthrough Guide. All right, so now it's time to begin the quests. So starting off on the notice board, there'll be three quests that you can choose from. The Dwarven Excavation Quest, the Nomengard Quest, and Umbridge Hill Quest. Now I would recommend starting with the Nomengard Quest only for the fact that you really only have one encounter to deal with in this place. Unless, of course, you piss off some gnomes, but generally this will probably be the easiest one. It is still hard, but doable. As for the other ones, they are a little harder as a level 1 party, but it is really up to you, and this is only my recommendation. So in Nomengard, the only encounters you will come across is a Mimic, and there are some rock gnome recluses in here that shouldn't give you too much problem unless of course you decide to aggravate them then well it might be a little harder depending if you are due if this is an xp quest or a milestone quest that is completely up to your dm if it is milestone then obviously i would say try not to piss off any rock gnomes and you will level up fairly quickly otherwise if it xp based well good luck because <laughs> there is a lot of rock gnomes here. So, a location overview. The caves of, of Nomengard are carved into a base of a mountain southeast of Fendelin, around a narrow waterfall. The rock gnome wizards who occupy these caves form strategic alliances with their human and dwarf neighbors as needs warrant. Reclusive and secretive, the gnomes craft minor magic items and useful non-magical inventions to pass the time. In these endeavors, their failures outnumber their success. They seldom stray far from home, subsiding largely on the mushroom that grow on Misty Island outside their caves. Nomengard has two married kings who rule in tandem, Nurkli and Corbos. Corbos recently lost his mind and is keeping Nurkli as his prisoner. Their subjects don't understand the nature of Corbo's affliction and are at a loss as to what to do. They wish no harm to befall either king, but they acknowledge that Corbo's has become a danger to himself and others. In addition to the danger posed by the Mad King, two gnomes have mysteriously vanished within the last 10 days. No one except King Corbo's knows that the shape-changing monster, a mimic, has crept into a Nomengard and is feeding on the gnomes, changing its appearance as it makes its way through the complex. Corbos was attacked and almost killed by the creature with that, e with that event inspiring his madness. He has sequestered himself and his beloved Nurkli in their quarters because he doesn't want the monstrous shape changer to devour them. Corbos hopes the creature will tire of eating gnomes and leave. Providing Corbos with evidence of the mimic's demise restores his sanity. Okay, so a little some little features of Nomengard. Uh, the ceiling, the ceiling throughout are seven feet high and flat. The doors are normal, are made of wood fitted with rusty iron handles and hinges. A locked door can be opened with a successful DC 10 dex check using these tools. A locked door can be forced open as an action with a successful 15 strength athletic check. Secret doors are made of stone and blend in with the surrounding stonework. Finding a secret door requires a search of the wall and a successful 10 wisdom perception check. As for lighting, all caves are illuminated by hanging oil lanterns attached to a rope and pulley mechanism that make it easy for the gnomes to lower the lanterns and refill them with oil. And the waterfall. The caves of Nomengard echo with the roar of a nearby waterfall. The sound is so loud that gnomes and visitors must shout to be heard unless they're closed door between them and the waterfall. So your quest goal is to basically obtain at least one magic item from the gnomes. Of the items that you can get, only the hat of the wizardry interests the town master, Herban Wester, who offers to buy it for 50 gold, even though he knows no one who can attune to it. However, the gnomes won't hand over any magic items until the characters speak to Fibblestib and Dabbledob in area G11. Now, if you rescue Nurkli and end Corbo's madness, the Grateful Gnomes give you guys a clockwork amulet and pole of collapsing. You also will receive a gift from each king, a wand of pyrotechnics from Nurkli and a hat of wizardry from Corbo's. Now, one more thing about this place, there is wild magic. 
Uh, so while magic isn't too bad, but anytime, but at being level one, you shouldn't have too much to worry about. Um, as for the spellcasters, if you cast a spell that is level one or higher, an additional effect may occur. So when you cast one, you gotta roll a d20 and the DM will consult the table to determine the effect. And the magic will last one hour until ended with a remove curse spell or similar magic. Now the effects aren't too bad, but you have a few. So there's a nun. Uh, the caster skin turns a vibrant shade of blue. Tiny insubstantial motes of light circle the caster, shedding a bright light 10 foot radius and dim light for an additional 10 feet. The caster sprouts wings like a butterfly. The wings give the caster a flying speed of 30 feet. The caster teleports up to 60 feet to a random unoccupied space of the DM's choice. And then on a 20, a whimsical effect of the DM's invention. So overall, the wild magic effects aren't really that bad. So if you do have them, you don't really have much to worry about. So go ahead, cast that magic, and who knows, maybe you'll get some wings and you'll be able to fly around. All right, so now let's go through all the areas. So first up, we got G1 location, which is Misty Pool and Mushroom Island. So on here, there's not really too much except for some mushrooms, really. But the mushrooms could be kind of useful. Now the mushrooms, there are three colored mushrooms. Red mushrooms provide oil that the gnomes use for fuel their lanterns and other mechanical devices. The green mushrooms are ground into flour and used to make tasty green bread. And the purple mushrooms are crushed and fermented to make mushroom wine. So use that as you will. Uh, if you want food, wine, or some mushrooms for oil to light lanterns, maybe in future adventures, might be useful to get some. And the G2 location, you have a waterfall and a rope bridge. So the waterfall plunges 60 feet. It's mist slightly obscuring 35 foot long rope bridge firmly anchored to 20 foot high ledges. So the bridge is difficult terrain and is 15 above the water, 15 feet above the waterfall. So if you fall or jump from the bridge, you really don't take any damage. And the bridge has an AC of 11 and 30 hit points, which you shouldn't really have to worry about because I don't think you'll have to cut the bridge down. But if you do, at least you know now. In G3, you have the dining room. Nothing too much of interest there. G4, you have the kitchen. Now here there are five rock gnome recluses. You have Joy Bell. Use a poker to stoke the fire of a hot iron stove standing against the east wall. Dimple who's a male, uses complicated press-like contraptions to squeeze oil out of a big red mushroom and filter liquid into four oil flasks. Panana, female, stands atop a low table and uses a mechanical rolling pin contraption to knead green bread dough. Upendown, who's a male, forms the dough into loaves of green bread. And Turve around, female, teeters on a stool as she stuffs a big purple mushroom into barrels so that it can ferment and be turned into mushroom wine. Now, it is urged that you guys talk to some of these people uh, to learn more about what's going on in the area. Um, in G5, you have yourselves the pantry. Not much of interest here. In G6, you have barrel crabs. Now, this is not an enemy but depending on the character you choose, you can actually use these to move around the complex. So each barrel crab is a large object with an AC of 15 and 30 hit points and a strength score of 10 and immunity to poison and psychic damage. It is designed to hold a single small humanoid, though a medium humanoid can fit inside with some discomfort. Now, when you're in the barrel with the hatch closed, uh, you have total cover against attacks from outside contraptions. So you can use an action to make the contraption scuttle across the ground at a walking speed of 15 feet or make one attack with its pincer claws. So its claws only get a plus two to hit and it does about five piercing damage. But the target can be grappled. So if you want, getting into barrel crabs while fighting the mimic would definitely help you guys out. And in G7 location, there's an auto-loading crossbow platform. Now each crossbow comes with 20 bolts. And again, this would be a good weapon to fight a mimic 
if it would follow you into this location. So it has a range of, of 50 to 200 feet, it has a plus five to hit, and it only does about five piercing damage. There is a rock gnome recluse in here named Factory. Now at first when you walk into this room, she might be a little hostile and try to try the contraption on you guys. Now you can convince her not to, obviously would be the smarter choice, and maybe she'll help you out and tell you a few things about the location and maybe help you fight the Mimic herself. And now the G8, Mimic and the Mushroom Wine. So this is where the Mimic is. In this room, there are 12 40 gallon barrels set into a wild, wild alcove. Each barrel is secured by a wooden brace. The barrels in the south alcove have been tapped with wooden spigots. Two of these barrels are half full and two are nearly empty. So the mimic is hiding as one of these barrels and it is really up to the DM to determine which one it is. So I can't really tell you which one because I don't really know. So first off, now if you are a party of one to four, this is a deadly encounter. So be ready. But if you are in the barrel crabs, at least this will give you some chance and to get some damage in before it might destroy the barrel crab and help you from dying. If you are a party of five, it is only a hard encounter. And between six and eight, it is relatively easy. So for that big of a party, this will be an easy encounter. Maybe your DM will throw in two mimics instead, but it's really up to them. So the mimic itself isn't too strong of a creature. It only has an armor class of 12. It does have a fair good amount of hit points, especially for a level one party at 58. Now it can only move at 15 feet. Now that is your best thing right there. Now, if you have a mage on your team who could potentially slow down its movement, then, I mean, there you go. Then you're ready. Keep it at range and just keep hitting it off with range attacks and it'll be dead in a matter of time. Now, if it does get a hold of you, this is where you have to worry because it could definitely kill you in one shot if it does get you. So, what happens is if it bites you, it has a plus 5 to hit, and it could do 7 damage plus 4 acid damage. So, on average, it can do 11 damage in one shot, which as a level 1 can kill most players. Now, first encountering the creature, if it is in its mimic form, then you should be prepared because it will mostly do its pseudopod ability. So if you do touch it, it will try to grapple and cling to you and you must do an escape, a DC of 13 to try to escape from it. If you don't, then yeah, it'll grapple you and you'll take seven points of damage right off the bat. So if you can in this room, try to keep your distance Try to destroy the barrels, peg them off like that. Any archer, any mage, anything with long range attacks will be very effective against the mimic. And if you are in the barrel crabs, then again, you'll have full cover and at least some protection to do some damage to the mimic before it potentially kills off your party. Uh, so there are two rock gnome recluses in here who we'll ask who's there, but they'll be cautious and they'll assume you might be a shape changer, so you'll have to convince them otherwise that you're not. So by doing that, you can do a 10 Charisma Deception check, a 10 Charisma Intimidation check, or 10 Charisma Persuasion check to convince them you're not. Now in G10, this room is the Spinning Blades. So in this room, the trap can definitely KO a character in one shot. And to avoid it, you have to do a 15 deck save or take 18 damage. And if you fail, you only take half at nine damage, which is definitely still enough to KO a character. So be careful. But set into the south wall of the smaller western part of the room is a brass lever in the down position. Pulling the lever up causes the turnstiles to stop spinning, allowing safe passage through the chamber. So as a way to obviously get around it. You could obviously use the mage hand as well to move the lever from east from the east doorway. And then you have the G11 Inventor's Workshop. There are two rock gnome recluses, a male named Fibblestib and a female named Doubledob. So in here you can talk to them and find a few things out, uh, but there is treasure. 
The book on the pedestal is a spell book that the rock gnome of Nomengrad share. Its cover depicts the titles as Magic of Nomengard, and it contains the wizard spells Burning Hand, Detect Magic, Identify, Magic Armor, Magic Missile, Shield, and Sleep. In the G12 room, Gnome Domiciles. So in here there are eight rock gnome clues, and not much else. In G13 you have the treasury. The door to this room is locked, and Fibblestib and Dabbledob carry the keys. So as for the treasure in this room, if you can manage to get in, this is where you can get the clockwork amulet and a pole of collapsing. Now it does take about an hour to find each item unless you have the detect magic spell. Now we have the G14 throne room. Situated atop a stone dais are two squat thrones made of scrap metal and size for gnomes. A secret door in the north wall conceals a short tunnel leading to area G15. Only the gnome kings know of the secret passage. And then the last room, the gnome king's bedroom. So this is where King Corbaz has locked himself and King Nurkli in their bedroom. Forgetting that there's a secret door that others could find and use to gain entry. Now, if you somehow find this room, they'll think you are a shape changer. Now, Corbaz doesn't regain his sense until you assure him that the mimic has been killed. Now, whether it is killed or not, to convince him takes a 12 charisma persuasion check. And there are treasure in here. There's a small unlocked chest under the gnome's bed, and that contains the hat of wizardry and a full charge wand of pyrotechnics. So that is it for the Nomengard quest, and I hope that helps you out. And next time, we'll be doing a new quest. So hope to see you guys then, and stay tuned for the next video. And make sure to subscribe, like, let me know what you think of the video in the comment section. You could also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and watch my live streams at GM Balazar. And I hope to see you again soon. Yeah.